following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. And man, quite a start to 2022 so far. Yesterday, the market's accelerating in dramatic fashion to the downside. We start things off with the S&Ps. Right now, you're positive by two points, trading at 46.95 overnight. You were as low as 46.68. You zoom in on the action. We have an all-time high made just about 48 hours ago at 48.08 in the S&Ps. Yesterday, we kick off the trading day. Uh, let's zoom in on the action yesterday at a price point of about 47.80. Things really escalated at 2 p.m. Eastern time as you had the Fed minutes come out. And boy, you talk about an escalation, folks. You traded at 2 p.m. We have a high of 47.7750. So within 2.5 points of 47.80. And by 6 p.m. last night, you were trading at 46.8175. Almost 100 points in the span of about four hours in the S&Ps. We dip below that level overnight. We're right back to where we were at the close basically yesterday. NASDAQ 100, you think you got big numbers in the S&P, man. How about the NASDAQ 100? Tuesday, you're at 16,500. Yesterday, you're at 16,200. Overnight, you were at 15,620. Right now, you're negative another third of a percent of the NASDAQ 100, 15,710. The Dow, quite a sell off as well, but you look where we are. I mean, we're right back to Monday action in the Dow. To put it in context, folks, Monday's action in the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about 700 points above where we're trading at right now. The Dow, just back to that level, the Dow had accelerated higher on Tuesday when you had a sell-off of some of those tech companies. But the Dow could not dodge the negative action on yesterday. You traded down about 500 bucks, zooming in on the action. 2 p.m. Eastern time, you're trading a hair under 36,800. You close out the day about 36,300. You're barely positive. And the Russell traded lower as well. The Russell, man, you talk about some percentage moves. Russell trades down almost 100 points for an index trading at 2280. Right now you're trading at 2197. Bitcoin trades lower as well. We reach a low of 42,375. What was not trading lower? Crude oil. $80.12 just like that. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday talking about crude, talking about Forex. He's been a crude bull for a while. Man, these volatility, uh, the volatility in these markets, the swings in both directions, check out that crude acceleration. Uh, just yesterday, I was making the remark in terms of December 2nd, so you're talking about just over a month, you've now gained $18 in the price. You're talking about almost a 30% move in the price of crude, back above 80 bucks, recent highs, 85.41 for that crude market. Gold taking a hammering this morning from yesterday's action. Gold, yesterday was at 1830. Today, you're trading at 1787. Now, what happens here on gold, <coughs> excuse me, is that, yeah, you were trading at 1809. So you're down about 20 bucks on the session um, from 330. But I think technically the gold contract closes uh, at 230. So some of that negative action coming from yesterday in terms of the $38 negative move from the close of action yesterday, you're still down $20, though. So half of that negative action happening from the close of negative uh, of action yesterday. We were almost up to 1810 this morning. You trade right now at 1787. Silver down more than a dollar from yesterday's market close and we got to jump to notes and bonds because man oh man it is quite a market right now we got a 10-year yield of 1.726 percent we were up to almost 1.75 when you had the 10-year down to 128.14 just about an hour and a half ago uh right now to 128.21 pretty remarkable doesn't always take this long as i kick off the program to go through everything that we have happening just as a market wrap-up 
But you saw the moves, moves across the board in every single market, folks, whether you're talking about the indices, of course, whether you're talking about cryptos, even you're talking about crude higher, gold lower, notes and bonds, yield rising, the 10 year pulling back. And let's jump around to some of the tech stocks, because my goodness, uh, the route has been pretty spectacular to kick off the trading year. Microsoft, we're at 315 right now. You take a look at Microsoft on a daily. We were up to almost 350, folks. You give up. We're 10 percent off the highs of Microsoft, just like that. It is remarkable how quickly you can pull back 10%, but just like that. And Microsoft's gonna open down $1.30. This morning, we were up December 29th at 344. You're gonna give up an even 30 bucks. So even this year, you're gonna open it almost down 10%, down technically 10% from those highs. Uh, the headline out there, pretty staggering numbers. NASDAQ, how about not a billion, not a million, how about a trillion, a trillion dollar route? There's the headline, NASDAQ, $1 trillion route fuels concerns of a bumpy 2022. Pricey tech stocks lead the drop. Arc Innovation down 9% this week. Not staggering when I just showed you. You could be just an owner of a very strong company like Microsoft and you're down to like 10% basically to start off the year. Uh, futures signaled further pain. We're a little bit lower this morning on the NASDAQ 100. Nearly $1 trillion in value wiped out in the NASDAQ Composite Index. $1 trillion. Uh, this week already as a surge in U.S. bond yields spook investors. Uh, boy, they talk about here expensive software makers, biotechs, and newly minted stocks fell the most on Wednesday. They talk about ARC as well. Let's take a look at ARC out of curiosity. So if you live and die by growth stocks that are multiples that are just bonkers, well, yeah, you're going to be prone to some pretty high volatility. There is ARC, ARC almost cut in half from where you were uh, in February of last year now. Still, I kind of brought this up when we were talking about this recently. You're talking about if you were in ARC at the beginning of 2020 at 50 bucks. What is that, 35? That's a 70% return still over a two-year period, all things considered, right? It can't go from 33 to 160 forever. Quite a pullback, though. Didn't imagine that that would be possible, I'm sure, many investors in that. Now, especially considering how well Tesla has held up. You look at Tesla compared to where we started the year in 21. Uh, Kathy Wood, she just should have stuck with the Tesla boat as you would have went from 820 to 1088. Now, Tesla this week alone, they have not been spared from some of the carnage, but look at where we are. You closed out last year, and we're actually positive for the calendar year, but that having to do with the dramatic run that this company had to start off the year, uh, that's when they came out with their number of deliveries for the final quarter. Stock rises to 1200 Elon makes $30 billion on Monday, and just like that, he's lost it all back in the market as the stock's 135 bucks off of the high so far. Uh, to kick off 2022. And man, let's jump around to some of the stocks that really got punished yesterday. Roku, watch out, man. Roku, I think it was down 12, 13%, double digit losses for Roku just yesterday, in addition to the losses we had on Tuesday, in addition to the losses this stock has had since July at 490.76. Man, you talk about double tops, folks, uh, technical analysis. It doesn't get much prettier than that in terms of an area. If you're long on Roku, right, you're thinking about selling anywhere, you get up to this area that you've double tested, you better have your guard up and be willing to sell potentially if that turns around because not many would have thought probably that you go from 490 to 190. But just like that, you do. And you're back to almost 2019 prices, folks. 176.55. Not many would have thought Roku back to those prices. Zoom paid the price yesterday as well. We're trading at 173. Salesforce, software makers, that was quite a day. We have some Salesforce in my newsletter. Uh, quite a pullback. You're talking about $20 yesterday alone. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got a chart of the S&P up here. You're talking about flat for the session right now. Pretty remarkable action. When you look at the week, we had the acceleration yesterday. Now, taking a look at the S&P on a daily basis, uh, interesting action as we bump up potentially against the lower boundary line. You put the S&P back on a weekly, uh, and we're talking about a trend line, folks, all the way basically from the COVID pandemic lows of March of 2020, the week of March uh, 30th to be exact, final week there. You can see pretty well defined bumping up against the lower boundary line. Now, we have risen slightly above and slightly below that trend line on a couple occasions. Most recently, uh, maybe back in October when we were at the lower end, putting it back on a five-year daily, zooming in on the recent action. You can see that occasionally. But when you talk about a little linear regression there, interesting to see where we go from here in terms of do we accelerate below that trend line or do we pop and stay in that trend line. Now, the Qs, a little bit of a different scenario. I got a nice channel line in the Qs going back to September of last year, uh, going back to really October of last year when the acceleration of the markets began. We got the vaccine efficacy. We got over the uh, election. And you take a look at the Qs, pretty well defined as well, not quite to the bottom boundary line of the acceleration in terms of the negative action we've gotten 375 would be about where you'd be bumping up against the lower boundary line of the queues we've gotten above it briefly we've gotten below that line briefly as well but you can see you back it up to september we've touched that line november we touched that line back in march we touched that line back in may October, and if we make it down, we got about nine more points in that queues that we could go, but we'll see where we go. We got the NASDAQ 100, negative 52 points uh, as we come into the open in about 10 minutes from right now. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern Time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. Uh, talking about defined risk, talking about options, talking about volatility. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we've got a little bit of all that right, right now, don't we, Tommy? You know, it's funny. For your viewers, 
it's important that they understand. Yesterday's big sell-off in the market from 1 o'clock till the end of the day, you know, the NASDAQ was already down, but the Dow was actually up when the Fed minutes were released. The Fed minutes are notes and comments and topics from three weeks ago. Three weeks ago with a Fed that is as transparent as they've ever been and still yet three week old data caused the market to sell off. And you can think that's okay. You can think that's, that's absurd, but nevertheless, you have to trade the market that's in front of you. And when I've, I've, I've had a long career and even though you can be as transparent and guide as much as you want and still the market reacts to data even when it's three-week-old data, Tommy. So yet, yesterday was very interesting. Um, I think tomorrow's non-farm payroll number really becomes important now. You've got a, a 10-year yield sitting right at 172 now, 173 as we start today. That's a pretty critical area for this number to hold, but I think tomorrow's non-farm payroll data will certainly uh, be a big number there in terms of, what happens to the market? What happens to interest rate, Tommy? Yeah, pretty remarkable action to say the least, man. Some of the some of the growth companies, right, Kevin? Software makers, uh, just some of the multiples, Roku and Salesforce come to mind. I know you guys chat, just remarkable moves. Even a company like Roku, man, I think it was down 12% yesterday alone. Uh, huge moves across the board. So as you said, we look forward to tomorrow's number. Now, You've said it many times, which you enlightened me to this, in terms of the wage data, especially right now, very important coming out of the non-farm payroll data when you look at inflation, you look at rising wages. So that'll be an important number that will be indicative of the inflation that we're looking for. Um, but on the just on the jobs front, Kevin, right, it's an interesting time here, as in where do you see – it's, it's almost tough in my head where sometimes I think if you even told me the number ahead of time, Kevin, I'd struggle maybe to understand how the market might react to it the way we're working right now. If we get a big jobs number, let's just say it's a big if, right? But ADP was a nice number on Wednesday, yesterday. If we get a big beat, let's say, on the jobs number, um, will that cause the market to be even more in pause because it'll give the Fed more room to tighten quickly? Or is it all going to be about wages and inflation at this point, in your opinion? Well, it's going to be both, Tommy. Bonds and yields will react to the wages part of, of, of this um, report. The overall market, stocks, may look at the, the, the unemployment and the non-farm payroll number, the headline numbers. So it's, that's why this number is so important, Tom, because there's really something in this number for everybody, right? It's, if you're looking at just headline numbers, you've got two big ones. If you're looking at inflation, there's a big inflation read in terms of wages. Now, the, the numbers are looking for 0.3 and 4.1% in year over year. That's seven tenths lower than last month. So what happens, Tommy, if we get a good number and some of the dots are leading up to that? Remember, we had a, a big beat in terms of jolts number, in terms of job openings, much lower that, than expected. That may indicate some higher uh, non-farm payrolls. Then we had an ADP that was double the expectations. Now this morning we've had a good jobless claims number. All of those dots may lead to a stronger uh, jobs data, right? So we're going to look at that, and then we're going to look at the wages. And what if the wages are soft? You know, 0.3 and a 4, 4.1? I'm not sure that would take the bond market higher here, Tommy, So, uh, in terms of yield. So there, there's a lot going on. That's why this is the number one data point of the month, Tommy. It's pretty cool, man, the wage trend. And it is pretty cool in terms of the projections out there because – you know, if last year taught us anything, man, the projections in this environment for inflation, for jobs, for wages across the board, very, very difficult to say the least. So even what the Fed is predicating right now, like you're talking about, um, all of that is based off projections. One of the projections, of course, tomorrow, non-farm payrolls for wages. Uh, but boy, we got a long way to go, Kevin, next year. Uh, next year, we're in the year, as in this year, as we go forward, the Fed meanders. We have a lot of economic data that's going to be coming out that's going to kind of decide their hand. And there's a lot of volatility right now going on, to say the least, as we all know. Uh, with all of that going in on, Kevin, what are you guys going to be talking about coming up at noon Eastern time today on Fast Market? 
Well, we're going to walk right into the belly of the beast, Tommy, and start looking at some of these um, tech names that have been beat up. And our first name we're going to look at today is Microsoft. And then we're going to cover that. And then we're going to look at Bookings Holdings. Uh, Lightfolio's got some interesting data on Bookings Holdings that they're going to look at. And then Lowe's was upgraded this morning, Tommy. That's looking significantly higher to start the day. So we're going to look at Lowe's in the final segment. It is pretty cool when the market gets punished, as it has the last couple of days. You get to see maybe what companies are handling it well, what companies are not. Yeah, Lowe's, they're going to be within about six bucks of its all-time highs. Microsoft, I was kicking off the show, Kevin, talking about Microsoft. Just like that, you're down almost 10% off of the highs. Um, you know, Kathy Wood, Arc Innovation, they get a lot of press in both directions. I saw some headline today saying that Arc's down 9% to start off the year. I said, well, you know, if Microsoft can be down almost 10% to start off the year by January 6th, you better believe that funds could be down as well, man. But I look forward to the program, always scanning the market for some good buying opportunities. When we get some pullbacks, man, pretty remarkable. Microsoft down almost 10%. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the program, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. We appreciate the education and the conversation as always always. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, man. Take care. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. They do an outstanding job. Check it out. We'll be right back from the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got a little bit of negative action to kick things off. S&P's minus by two points right now, 46.90. NASDAQ 100 negative by 71. Uh, you see, even these are one minute bars. For five minutes coming into the opening bell, you just traded down an additional 50 points. You're getting some volatility right out of the gate. I put it on a minute bar to see because this open's going to be important here. Now, I say that because I jumped over to Microsoft. Not quite the open you want for some of these equities that have gotten punished. You got Microsoft down another percent right now. You jump to some of the companies that really got punished yesterday. Salesforce jumped to 226, up to 228. We jumped to Roku shares. They're catching a little bit of a pop. Let's jump to Apple shares right now, down another percent at 173.55. We jump to Google. Google shares basically flat at 27.52 right now. You jump over to Netflix. Netflix down another 2.4% right now. We jump to the banks. JP Morgan, there's a pop for you, up about 2%. We put it back on a 15 minute to get the week going on. Uh, these banks, I was talking to my dad this morning. You know, if you're a long term investor, Kevin Hinks was talking about it. You know, you look for opportunities on pullbacks. Microsoft, maybe that's a 10% haircut that if you're a long-term investor, you want to start dabbling on. Some of the banks, you got quite an acceleration Monday and Tuesday. Remarkable that yesterday you give back quite an opportunity here. You're talking about $4 and change in a company like JP Morgan. Now, today you're catching a pop as well. But if you're looking for areas of this market for a little bit of safe haven with potential for dividends, returns, capital preservation, you might look to banks. J.P. Morgan up 1.5% today. Bank of America up 1.3% today. Wells Fargo up 2% today. Let's see how the travel stocks are trading right now. You got American up 1%, catching a little bit of a pop. Delta Airlines up 1.2%. Let's see how the cruise ships. Carnival up about 2.2%. Norwegian up about a percent. Airbnb on the travel sector, not so much. They combine the growth sector there. Airbnb down 1.5%. Uh, we jump over to Marriott. Marriott up about four tenths percent right now. Getting a scan of some of the markets in terms of what else we have going on. Uber, yeah, it's been interesting. Companies like Uber. I mean, look at the volatility here, right? You have the reopening trade going on a bit as Omicron doesn't look to be as harsh as once feared. Coming out of Thanksgiving, you jump to Disney. It's giving it up on two occasions this week, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. You traded higher before you gave it up. But all things considered, a company like Disney trading right where it was on Monday, 156.10. Walmart, another. Now, we have Disney in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. We also have Walmart in my newsletter. Walmart, negative action, down a percent right now. But you're almost right where you were on Monday. You're a little bit lower in terms of where you closed out last year. Last year, you closed out at about 144.50. If you are looking at Walmart, I'd encourage you to take a look at the trend line we have going on. You put it on a three-year weekly. Am I back a three-year weekly there? Ah, yes, I did. I did not want to extend that. That's what I want. Cancel that left extension. If you started off from July 6th of 2020, I'm going to delete that for some clarity here. Uh, you see Walmart, a little bit of support on that trend line to the upside here. Walmart, the other cool part about Walmart when you look at the fundamentals here, if you're looking for capital preservation, okay, there's only $399 billion in Walmart, 395 after a percentage lower today, of market capitalization overall. I do not see Walmart going to a $200 or $300 billion company. They just have too big of a reach, folks. There was an article last week or two weeks ago talking about that Walmart accounts for one out of four Order online, pick up in store dollars across the whole country. 25% of every single order that Americans have processed last year, okay, where you order online, pick up in store, which is a huge feature that's kind of come about during the pandemic that people seem to enjoy. It might even be more enjoyable uh, than that Amazon next day delivery. You order it, you pick it up, you pick it up in a half hour sometimes at Walmart, Target, etc. Pretty remarkable a company like Walmart accounts for 25% of that type of a sale when that type of a sale is a huge area of growth. We are going to start ordering a lot more items, folks, online and picking them up in stores. We're also going to just start ordering a lot more items online overall. We're already pretty immersed in that, but I imagine that trend continues. Point being, you have a company like Walmart that's doing 25% of the business of people ordering online and picking up in stores, and you're valued at under $400 billion, and you have tech companies getting routed to quite a degree here. I mean, to put it in context, you've got a company like Microsoft, 7.6 billion, 7.4 billion, how many shares they got? 7.5 billion shares outstanding. Valued at $2.37 trillion, 7.5 billion shares outstanding. I mean, for some context here, you're talking about $35 off of the highs there. 
That's $262 billion in market cap that Microsoft has lost almost in the last week versus a company like Walmart that's only a $399 billion market cap. All right. Now, there's a lot of other factors in play there, but when you see the type of devastation that's going on where you've got a company like Microsoft that gives up 10% in a matter of a few trading days, if you're talking about capital preservation for a portion of your portfolio even, that's some of the rotation going on, folks. And I'm not the only one thinking it because the action in Walmart this week speaks to the fact that I'm not the only one thinking it when Walmart is barely off of where you were Monday versus a company like Microsoft I just talked about, especially versus a company like, man, and there are some strong companies that are trading lower, folks. And I'm giving you my cases on this, okay? We have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. We also have some McDonald's fared somewhat well. That's a dividend company as well, but man, they've been on a tear recently. Uh, even just this week, that's an all-time high print on Microsoft, 271.20. Is that what it shows on the daily, too? Yes, it is. 271.20, all-time high we get on Microsoft. So right up against those levels, look at that acceleration. Trend line from, uh, excuse me, McDonald's, not Microsoft, breaks out of there. Now, McDonald's, there's a lot going on in this company as well. Real estate, a big part of it. You're talking about a $200 billion market cap for a company like McDonald's. Well, I just walked you through. Microsoft alone, in the last few trading days, has given up the entire market capitalization of a company like McDonald's. That's at least a variable you want in your head, where we might see the type of destruction to the market cap of the companies that we're talking about. Now, throughout that whole spiel... The market just accelerated higher. <laughs> Look at this NASDAQ 100, man. You just traded up 150 points off the open, folks. We've been open for seven minutes, and you are now more than 150 points off the open. Let's see how some of these tech stocks are trading. they got to be popping. Microsoft's up a third of a percent, but you're talking about $6 off the lows you had this morning. Now, what did I just say? Microsoft's got 7.5 billion shares outstanding. They just added more than $40 billion of market cap in the last six minutes. It's staggering, the type of volatility, folks. Apple shares, you're talking about a $3 pop from their open. Apple just added about $50 billion in market cap. You see how a trillion dollars can wipe out that quickly, folks. When Apple just added $50 billion in market cap in six minutes, Microsoft just added about $40 billion in market cap. There's $100 billion between those two companies alone, let alone you jump around. Google, Google just added, whew, what is that, 45 bucks per share? They don't have anywhere close to the level of shares the other companies do. 663 million, because they're trading in almost 3,000 shares a pop. Nonetheless, you see the moves are happening. Now, let's see how some of the companies that were hit the hardest yesterday, how they're reacting. Roku, yeah, not too big of a pop. 2.8% when you were down more than 10% yesterday. Salesforce, 2.5%. I mean, you're going to have volatility across the board in these these growth stocks in a big way. But the S&Ps, man, you're catching a bid up 14 points right now. Dow's up 23. We got all the markets green, folks. We got crude up more than two bucks, hanging out about $80. Gold catching a little bit of a bid as well at $17.94. Uh, Bitcoin, a little bit of a bid as well. All the markets catching a little bit of a bid right now. We jump over to notes and bonds. Pretty calm action to kick things off at 128.21. All right, folks, stay tuned. I got some more articles to go over, some news of the day. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 13, NASDAQ 100 up 50, the Dow up 9. I got a chart of Bed Bath & Beyond up. How about up 21% right now? And that was after catering, uh, cratering, excuse me, to 1190 on their earnings this morning. But the conference call begins, and they love what they're saying, up to 1620 right now. You take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond on a daily Still quite a tough chart out there. Going back to the last year, you're talking about bouncing from basically lows that we have not seen. Back it up a three-year weekly. Yeah, you make it down to three bucks during COVID. But you're talking about pushing levels that we were only below. Basically, from February of last year till August of last year, call it the COVID lows, we were up to 54 bucks almost. La uh, excuse me, I'm talking about two years, I guess. I got to re recalibrate my brain. For two years ago, it was 2020. Uh, you see the chart, though. Yes, it's a 20% pop. But, man, they need more action than that. But supply chain issues hammered results, but the stock is up anyway. Uh, lack of inventory due to, to due to supply chain bottlenecks cost Bed Bath & Beyond about $100 million, uh, cut its financial outlook for the year. Um, yeah, and there we go. So lost $0.25. Cents. They miss on revenue. Net loss grew to $276 million from a loss of $75. Um, System-wide same-store sales dropped 7%. They were looking for a 0.9% drop. They expect to book an adjusted loss of anywhere between 15 cents a share to break even on sales of 7.9 billion. Previously, it was looking for earnings of 70 cents. Analysts had estimated a full year adjusted earnings of 78 cents uh, for the fourth quarter. Expects earnings to break even or be as much as 15 cents a share. 2.1 billion is sales. Uh, I don't know what they were saying, folks, because there's a lot of tough action on that earnings uh but nonetheless getting a little bit of a pop maybe the market was looking for even worse reaction in terms of how bed bath and beyond did i think i bought some stuff from bed bath and beyond this holiday season even some like holiday toys or something like that somehow they had some of that action online all right jumping around to what else we have going on macy's uh they're closing more stores this year here's a map of which ones are on the list when you take a look uh macy's closing in early 2022 you see where they are right they got one in florida down there you're talking about bloomingdale's closing in estero florida bloomingdale's uh, Macy's closed in 2021. Utah and early 2022, we got a few locations on that map. Macy's, they've had quite a year though. Macy's, look at that acceleration, right? You start off last year at 11, you rise to 38, you give up a lot of those gains. Now, just to see the action here on Macy's, you pull up a Fibonacci retracement. Just below the 50% of that move. Now, you could start this, I tell you what, let's take off that one real quick. 
And if you start this from the run that it had starting in July, pops right at the 618. From the run it had from July up to the high of 38 bucks, Macy's pulls back a 618 to about the $24 area. Uh, Macy's up about three tenths percent today. All right, what else I have going on? I got a lot of articles up here. Let's jump over. Walgreens shares rise after its earnings get a lift from COVID vaccines and testing. These drugstore companies, the company said it administered 15.6 million COVID vaccines in the fiscal first quarter, bringing the total to over 56 million to date. I'll tell you a quick story um, of how, well, we'll Let's pull up Walgreens first. Not so fast, huh? Whoo, man, this market, watch out. Walgreens down 2.4% after being at 56.41 in the pre-market. You take a look at the daily, uh, chopping around, really. You look at the three-year weekly for the full COVID run. Really remarkable, this company pulling back. Let's back it up even further for a five-year weekly. Man, watch out, Walgreens. Now, a testament to how our healthcare system in general is so screwed up. I have good health insurance, uh, and I went to get my booster shot for my vaccine. Uh, I go to, I think it was CVS, and the insurance I have for my prescriptions, I just use Walgreens. I always confuse the two. It's pretty easy, but I'm pretty sure that my prescription plan allows me to just use Walgreens. So that's not a big deal. They got Walgreens and CVS on every single corner, right? So I just go to Walgreens for my prescriptions. Not a big deal. Uh, I have a very, very mainstream insurance plan, though. It should be that, like, maybe I could go to the two biggest prescription chains in the country. But point being, whatever. So I go to Walgreens. So not even thinking about it, I pull up CVS to book my booster because they're free. Book my vaccine booster for COVID. Uh, at the same time, they ask you if you want your flu vaccine. I say, sure, I'll do my good deed and get my flu vaccine at the same time, right? Trying to protect everybody's society, protect those around me that are more vulnerable. Uh, I sign up for the flu vaccine at the same time, go into CVS and find out that if I did not have insurance, okay, the flu vaccine would be covered. But since I do have insurance, and my insurance does not go through CVS, I'm unable to get the flu vaccine. So imagine I have great insurance. I'm showing up at one of the two. They basically a duopoly on prescriptions. All right. Now, yes, there are other options out there like Amazon and PillPack and all that stuff. But basically, it's Walgreens and CVS. Uh, I go to get my flu vaccine during an active pandemic with insurance, and they tell me they can't give it to me because they won't take my insurance. It's just a poor testament of things going on in terms of, you know, showing up to get vaccinated for the flu. Uh, hospitals are getting overrun, right? I have great insurance. I'm turned away. So what ends up happening, right? I get my booster for COVID, and I don't get my flu vaccine, and I haven't made it back to get my flu vaccine yet, which I should. And I'm going to try and find the time. But it's just a poor statement of things around in terms of somehow the system set up that I pay for great insurance. I show up to get my flu vaccine that's free if I don't have insurance. And meanwhile, I'm turned away um, those insurance companies. Anyway, I could spend a whole hour on that one. That's for sure. All right. Let's jump around to what else we have going on. That was Walgreens that got me teed off on that one. Uh, let's see what else we got up here. What do we got? What do we got? We got a few things up there. No, we talked about the Trillium. We talked about Bed Bath & Beyond, Macy's. Bentley's having quite a year. Luxury car maker Bentley reports a second consecutive year of record sales as other automakers struggle. 14,659 vehicles, 31% increase. Bentley, they got some nice, nice automobiles over at Bentley. 102-year-old automaker said Thursday, uh, Volkswagen owns them. 14,659 vehicles, 31% increase over the 11,206 that they did last year. Uh, cryptos, how about $14 billion in 2021? Man, if you are a scammer, it is a wonderful time to be alive, I imagine, in the crypto sector. $14 billion in 2021, uh, that's a 79% increase from 2020, and I imagine it's only going to keep going from there. All right. Let's take a peek. I almost got too many articles. I want to make sure we hit them. Yeah, we had weekly jobless claims this morning. Usually that's a number you want to look at. Everything going on, not too big of a number. 207,000. Uh, market was looking for 195. It's been ticking around 200,000 for the last four to six weeks or so. And let's jump down the line for other stocks. Yeah, Constellation. So initially a little bit lower after reporting earnings before recovering that loss. Constellation earned 312 with 276. But I got something they are doing... Is it Coca-Cola? Yeah, Coca-Cola and Constellation team up to create alcoholic Fresca cocktails. Not bad. I kind of like that idea. This market, man, 
Now we got negative everywhere, folks. Uh, Coca-Cola, that's a decent chart on a weekly basis. We just traded to, I believe that's all-time highs, right? Yeah, all-time highs this week on Coca-Cola. Yesterday, actually, you've backed off a bit. You jump over to Constellation. There's some volatility for you on Constellation. So they're out with their numbers. You're down three-tenths percent. They're going to be teaming up with Coca-Cola. Uh, Fresca, that, that was one of the first, like, um, big popular seltzer waters, right? So it makes sense. Combine Fresca with a little bit of cocktails, get into that hard seltzer arena. Stay tuned, folks. Come right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps basically back to flat right now. You give back that whole pop that you got at the open. We just traded up to 47.12 almost in the S&Ps. And just like that, you give up that 20 points that we just gained in the last half hour. Watch out, folks. It's going to be some volatility today, to say the least. NASDAQ 100, you pop about 150 points at the open. And just like that, we've given up almost 100 points, back to 15,755. You got crude just under 80 bucks. You got gold trading at 17.92. And we jumped to notes and bonds right now. The 10-year negative by five ticks, but off of the lows, we're talking about a yield about 1.7. 2% on the tenure. And folks, it's January 6th. Unfortunately, last year, January 6th, quite a scene at the Capitol. I encourage you to do some thinking today, folks. It was a sad deal out there last year. And uh, bottom line is, folks, you had the president show up, hold a rally, and his supporters stormed into the Capitol. Okay. 
people ended up dead, whether it was the cops, whether it was the woman who was one of the intruders. Um, just a very sad deal. And it's unfortunate that those same lies of, you know, votes and all that stuff is still going on and we're going to see it all happen again. But I want to remind you folks that no matter what you think about January 6th, okay, it was all about the president trying to get states from Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico, okay, that they were just all going to get erased. That those seven states, okay, and they were going to get as many as they could, just wouldn't count. That the president of the United States would just say, forget about those states I lost, because I don't want to believe I lost in them, and I'm going to tell everybody I lost, okay? That's not the country we live on, folks. Let's live in. It's not. If that happens in third world nations, we look at that nation with sadness that they don't have democracy. And it happened in America. And thankfully, uh, Mike Pence stood his ground and, and wouldn't acquiesce to the president when he wanted to just ignore the votes of seven states of American citizens. So stand up for what's right. We need elections, folks, that matter. We don't need presidents that just do away with states that vote against them. So remember that on today, along with the loss of life that we had last year. I appreciate you starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got quite a market. We got the S&Ps down by 10, NASDAQ 100 down by 43, the Dow off 115. Have a great day, folks. Stay tuned.